Now that we've seen how the push pull and move tool can be used to create simple roof structures, let's use the follow me tool to create a little more complex structure like the cross gable over here. Now, if you notice this, you'll see that it has a profile that wraps and extends over to this far edge. Now, just to create this with the push pull or just with the line tool would be a lot of work. And instead, we're gonna use the follow me tool with the profile to create it very easily. The first thing that we need to do is create our little addition here. You'll see here that we created a guide here that's gonna allow us to draw a line. So take the line tool and just draw from this point here, down in the blue axis, to this point here. And you'll notice if you take the select tool or the spacebar, spacebar is the shortcut for the select tool, you'll see that it creates two separate surfaces or faces. Take the push pull tool, highlight this surface, click once to extend the push pull. And since I don't know that distance, but I know they're in the same plane, I can just hover my cursor and infer to that distance over there. So it looks like it's nine feet, three and three eighths of an inch. And inferring can work in any different axes or location. So I can infer to this point here. If I want the building maybe half the height, I could push pull and infer maybe to the midpoint here. There's a lot of different ways that you can use inferencing while in push pull. Now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna create a profile for our roof to follow, similar to the profile that we have over here. Now I'm gonna take the tape measure tool I'm gonna measure this distance from the top point down just to see what it is. And it looks like it's four feet, two inches. Let's zoom back now. And we'll take the line tool and we'll draw a line from the midpoint here up in the blue axis. It's very critical that you go up in the blue axis. Depending on your view, it may look like you're drawing up, but you may in fact be on another axis. You can also see that it's inferring to that point. So I can infer to it, or I can simply just type in the value four feet two. So you notice as I type in four feet two inches, I don't have to put the inch sign in the value control box. I can just leave it blank. That is because our default units is in inches. So I'll click there. Next, I'll draw a line down until I hit the end point here. Once you have your profile, you can now use the follow me tool to create the path that it's gonna follow. Now there are two ways to do this. There's the hard way and the easy way. And we'll show you the hard way first, but you'll realize afterwards always to use the easy way. The hard way to use the follow me tool is by first clicking on the follow me tool, which is this tool here. You wanna first click on the face that you want to extrude, which is this face here. And then you'll see the red line starting to highlight. And basically, you just want to follow your cursor over the edges that you want it to follow. Now, because the cross gable, we don't want it to turn like this. We want it to stay flat here. We don't want to turn the corner. So we just want to leave it here. Once you follow the entire path, you can simply click and it'll create your profile. Now, as you can notice, it does create some extra geometry. And that's because the profile is longer than the addition that we have here. If I take the eraser and go to erase these edges, I'm gonna lose more geometry that I need. For example, I need the line work here, and I need a couple of the lines there. To bring in those lines, simply just take the line tool and trace this point here that's gonna create that intersection, and I'm gonna trace this point here to create that intersection for this surface here. Now you can take the eraser and you can erase the extra geometry. Now notice the profile followed and created this slope here. I can move that using the move tool and just moving this edge out. Now remember earlier we used the up arrow to lock in the blue axes. Well here we're gonna do the same thing but we're gonna lock in the red axes. And you can do that with the right arrow key. Now you just have to click it. You don't have to hold down the right arrow key. You can click it and just infer to the face below and then click. Last but not least, I always like to keep my models very clean. So I like to take the eraser and just erase any extra edges that I don't need in my model. We'll even erase them over here too. The other way that you can use the follow me tool 
is by pre-selecting the path or the face and then clicking the follow me tool and just single clicking on the profile. And that's gonna generate the entire wrap around for you as shown in the hip roof here. You can do the same thing here for these two examples. So I can click on the face, click on the follow me and have it follow. And again, I could clean up some of that geometry. And for the overlaid hip, same thing. I could click on the face, click on the follow me, and click on the profile. Now, another thing to note, if you wanted to follow just half or just a certain amount of lines, you can also, instead of just pre-clicking the face, you can pre-select the edges, just so long as they're connected. And then I can click the follow me and follow that face. So see how it leaves this straight, like in our cross gable over here? It's another way that you can use the pre-selection. In this case here, I'm gonna take a line tool and just trace that edge right there. And now I can erase the extra geometry. If by accident you erase a line that you shouldn't have, like that line right there, don't worry. Just take the line tool and just trace back in that line and you'll essentially heal the surface and heal those edges.